hello. <laughs> Hi, mascara customers and artists. I am so excited, teensy bit nervous, to be talking to you guys today. My name is Lisa, and I'm a mascara artist, and I am from the great state of Iowa. I live close to Des Moines, the capital. See, a couple people jumping on it does have a lag. I said I wasn't going to say, okay, let's wait till we get some people, but it is kind of nerve wracking. <laughs> Hi, Nicole, um, when you get on and just start talking. Um, but I don't want anyone to wait. Uh, I, for many of my mascara fellow artists and friends, they know I can talk. I'm a talker. Hey, Lindsay. Um, but I want to make sure this is, I don't ramble clear and concise. So I have taken a few notes, but I will probably just kind of speak from the heart um, for most of this. But I did want to ask one question. Hey, I see some of my team on, some of my mascara friends. Um, just because it's fun to interact and because it's summer, tell me your favorite summer activity. Mine is boating. And with the 4th of July coming up, we just boat all weekend and it is my absolute happy place. Um, but I would love to hear what some of you guys like to do in the summer because I can't believe it's already July 1st tomorrow. I'm sure all of you. Hi Cheryl are thinking the same thing. Um, so my topic is my mascara story and I'm so grateful for Rachel Jacobs who heads this group for asking me to do this. Not only because um, I really do love telling people how I came about to be where I am, but hey Taylor, but also um, because it does get me out of my comfort zone, this company, this job, everything about it has been a little blown out, um, all about personal growth and stepping out of your comfort zone. And I'm really excited if you saw my quote before I started to kind of tell you where um, all that fits in. You can never cross the ocean, which that speaks to my heart. I love the ocean, anything water, I saw that Christy, unless you have the courage to lose sight of the shore. So let's start with the mascara story. Um, I, 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 lo I went back and watched some of the other stories because I haven't been able to follow a lot of them. And the last several that I watched, there was a lot of the same, um, kind of tie in that people loved the makeup, they followed Kara, they, um, you know, just loved anything about makeup. And that was not me. <laughs> I am here to tell you that I did not like makeup. Going to Ulta and Sephora is not my idea of fun. <laughs> um, I wore Bare Minerals Mineral Powder for 12 years, hey Kate, hey Jessica, and slapped it on, put some bronzer on, a little bit of mascara, and called it good. And so to this day, and anyone that talks to me about my mascara story or if I tell people what I'm doing to this day, it still blows my mind that now I'm doing makeup full time for a career. Um, I grew up a tom girl, I mean I liked getting ready and going out, but sports player, um, I have boys. So the idea of the makeup and loving makeup, I had never contoured, um, but I found Harmony through um, Instagram, where a lot of us have. And I was at this point in my life where I was getting into my late 30s and the Bare Minerals was not cutting it. I was realizing that I needed to actually get something that was better makeup, better coverage, um, happened to, you know, come across Harmony, got signed, or I mean, I ordered the makeup, little tiny quad, little, hey Jill, in one brush. And I got it and it was so pretty. Like we all see the packaging. It was like, oh my gosh, it's so cute. Um, and I put it on and it wasn't love at first sight. I really, really liked it. Um, I loved the concept um, and we had gone down to Kansas City to some visit some girlfriend or some friends, and this had been a couple weeks after wearing it. I remember going to a wedding and feeling pretty, <laughs> feeling like my skin was glowing. Um, hi guys, I'm seeing friends jump on. Um, and 
we we went to our friends and I was sitting there showing my friend this makeup and she was like, wow, that's, you know, unique. And, and I literally just said, I, I have this weird like feeling of what if I sold this? I mean, I'm telling you about it. No one's heard about it at that time. Hey, Dana, it um, was extremely new. This was three years ago. I don't know if I told you guys, almost three years ago, uh, in, or three years ago in August when I signed up. So it was three years ago in July that I started using it. And I mean, at that time, Iowa had maybe under 100 people. It was so, so, so new. And anyway, my husband and I are driving home and I don't know if I mentioned before, but I have always been in the finance industry, insurance, mortgage, always worked a white collar job. Um, and hey, Misty. And um, I were driving home from Kansas City and I told my husband, I said, this is so weird for me to actually say this out loud. I always thought the direct sales company type hey girl messages that was never me and um we're sitting there driving home and I said I've been stirring about something like I honestly think I want to sign up to sell this makeup and we went through I said it's 200 bucks for a you know kit but you still get makeup and I did the whole ROI the return of investment and also what I wanted to tell you guys too as a lot of people sign up and they want the makeup for discount, of course we all want that. Hi guys, I see some more Val and Betsy. Of course we all want, you know, how fun to get the makeup you like for a discount. Um, but I had more of a business mind in it. Um, like I said, I've always, I'm a marketing major. I work in business and mine was more like, I had this deep what if. I always say that. my How I started was what if. What if this is something that could turn into more? And what if it isn't? There was... I mean, there wasn't that big of an investment. My husband and I have basically said, if I don't sell any makeup for the first year with the back office and my kit, which I still got makeup in my kit, you know, I was out like $320. What, I mean, what? what's the huge risk, right? So we talked about it and he's like, sure, that's fine. And I'm like, but I'm not gonna bug anyone. I'm not going to have people, you know, ask any time for a friend to have a party. I will not do that. I'm not gonna post all over my Facebook. I mean, I was so gun shy about sharing the product my girlfriends had to beg me to show them after a while because <laughs> i didn't want anyone to think i was trying to sell them anything hey val um so anyway signed up um and immediately was all about learning i've always been somebody that any training mascara had any thing I could learn, any self-development, I ate it up. I wanted to know what, you know, why 3D foundation was the best. I didn't have any kind of cosmetic background, so I had to learn all of this. But my, the reason that I have become successful, I know, is because I have always been genuine. I do not take a sales approach. I share what I love and I want other people to have this product because I truly, truly believe in it. I believe in the product. I believe in the mission. I, the more I learned about the company itself, um, it only grew from there. Um, and my wheelhouse is women like me, women that don't love going to Ulta, women that don't know how to contour, don't know, you know, the first thing about eyeshadow looks. I thrive on that. I want to teach. I want everyone to know that they can feel like their best self. It's, it, it truly is. It's amazing. I love it. Okay. So let's fast forward. Cause again, I could talk for hours and I'm not going to. Um, so I, I continued on and, um, started growing my team and really, really the big thing that I'd always thought was consistency. I was not somebody that came out with a bunch of Instagram followers or social media presence. Um, I had to work my warm market. I had to, I am a very outgoing person. Um, so that helps <laughs> if any of my good friends here know that I could probably strike up a conversation with that wall behind me. <laughs> um, but I knew I had to be slow and steady and consistent. And if I kept consistent, what we plant today, we do not so till later. Um, it wasn't going to come overnight, um, but I started seeing success, um, started growing a team, started becoming close with my leader. Um, and about, it would be uh, March of last year, over, over Christmas break, I really started 
I could not keep one of the, okay, one of my quotes I love too is you're only one decision away from a different life and that if something excites you and scares you at the same time, you should do it. And I could not concentrate at work. I wasn't the best employee. We weren't busy. All I could think about is what if I, that what if again, what if I could spend more time with my team, spend more time on the business? Could I do this full time? I was scared out of my mind, the thought of that. I mean, I'd always had a steady paycheck. Um, I'm very, very grateful to have a husband that has a good job and does have insurance, so that helps. But I'll never forget, I turned, the end of February, I had a motivational calendar in my cubicle. And I turned for March, I turned it up and I loved reading the quote. I still have yet to get this um, framed. But this was on there. And this is, you can never cross the ocean unless you lose, have the courage to lose sight of the shore. And that's what I typed in my thing. And I kept looking at it and it kept, it was in my mind constantly. Like, I'm gonna, I wanna do this. I wanna risk this. I'm okay if I quit my job. I know I'm employable if I had, you know, I mean, if I had to go back into corporate America, but I, and I was, we were totally okay as a family. We sat down and we spreadsheeted and I was going, to, we weren't gonna have daycare. I stayed home with my kids last summer. 90% of that was good. <laughs> um, we spreadsheeted. We were fine if we had to cut back and maybe not go on one of our vacations. Because in my mind, I knew that if I had stepped back a little bit, that I could make this so much bigger. And I was stuck in a corporate job. I, I was lucky. I had um, pretty flexible. I got down to mom's hours where my kids, I was home when they came off the school bus. But I had this nagging sensation that I could do more. I was kind of that content in what I did because I made the money, nothing great, but um, you know, good enough. Uh, but I, I've i always known that I could do more. And so I quit. It was scary. <laughs> um, and I continued to work and continue to try to, my word of the year this year is discipline. It's not easy. You're not always motivated. You don't always want to you know, get up and I mean, I love what I do. It's amazing. I get to help women look beautiful. I get to lead a team of women. Um, but it has been the absolute best thing. It is such a blessing. I know it sounds cliche, but I just want people to know too, that if this is anything you've ever thought of, I am so nobody special as far as being in the makeup industry, no cosmetic, cosmetic background. But the thing Besides the obvious income and um, time freedom and being able to be with my children, the personal growth, another thing I wanted to show you guys, hey, Talina, um, the personal growth with this company, somebody had once said that direct marketing can be a personal, um, what did they say, growth with a compensation plan. It is, it is. There is so many people rooting you on and so I've just been eating up the, personal growth books. Um, and this one I want to recommend to everyone, customers, artists. It's the Slight Edge. It is amazing. It's for, <laughs> it is for everyone. And it is all about how it is the everyday things we do. This can be on your journey with direct marketing. This would be on your journey with weight loss. This could be on your journey for happiness. It is not about, you know, striking it rich or the quick, um, the quick fix, it's about what we do every day. And it's easy to do, you know, to read 10 pages of a good book, to make sure you get out and exercise for 20 minutes, to make sure that you have gratitude in your heart and you journal maybe three things, but it's easy not to. And if you don't do those things, it's not going to, you're not gonna die if you don't eat healthy today, but it's all about the curve, that if you continue to do these things, that's the slight edge. Only 5% of people will do it. 95 will not. It is so good, you guys. Sorry for my uh, soapbox. And I'll start wrapping it up too. The friendship, I mean, you guys have heard it. Um, it's amazing. Obviously, we have conference and events, and I have been blessed enough to win one of the incentive trips, and it got postponed. But um, it has been like my best friend on here said, it's filled my cup, it's filled my bucket. I've um, seen myself grow as a human being, as a better mom, 
um, as a happier person. I've always had confidence, but this is a different kind of confidence. This is a inner beauty. Um, and again, like Mascara said, seeing people feel or look beautiful is great, but seeing them feel and believe they're beautiful is life-changing. So if you've ever thought about it, talk to your artist that invited you to this group. Um, we welcome everyone. It really is a great sisterhood. Um, and uh, I hope I <laughs> didn't lose everyone and that you guys enjoyed hearing my story. And um, thanks so much. And you guys have a wonderful day.